Recording in progress. Okay. And I see Jennifer, I think. Yes, I'm here. Oh, good. Um, and do we need to wait for Josh to be on? Hi, President oh. Jaffe, I'm here. Oh, good. All right. Well, I'm going to call the meeting to order. And I think because we have remote people, it's roll call. Director Balboni. Present. Vice President Lather. Here. Director LeHue. Here. Director Christensen is absent. President Jaffe. Here. Okay. It's an opportunity for board members to remove items from consent agenda. Tom? Um, yes, please. Um, item 3.8, what's on tap? I just have a couple little things. Okay, so we'll take that at the end then. Point eight, yeah, at the end. All right. Do we have nothing? Do you have anything? I was going to make a comment or two if you pulled 3.8. So anyway, yeah. Um, <clears throat> You're pretty it, quick. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So is there a motion? Oh, wait, no, board, um, public comment. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I have a question about a couple of items on the consent agenda. Um, first of all, item 3.2, the finance status report. Um, to be included in a future packet, there is no financial status report. And there hasn't been one since um, April when the financial status report for February was provided to your board. So I'm a little concerned about this because um, you have no idea about how it's really shaking out with the rate increases and... Um, I think that information should be provided as soon as possible. I also have a question about um, item 3.7, the excess property sales. Those are some excellent deals you're offering on some very low mileage vehicles. And uh, $50 for an arc welder is a great deal <laughs> if it works. So um, I'm wondering how you will, will advertise those excess properties to the general public. I think you'll have considerable interest in whether there will be a bidding process. You may actually get more money than what you're asking. It's a relatively low amount. Um, and also I want to ask why there is no real property being listed in the excess property. Uh, it has been suggested by Director Balboni and others that the 200 plus acres that the district owns on Glenwood be sold. You've been hanging on to it for a long time and I'm sure that someone would like to buy it and that would give money, much needed money to the district. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any responses? No? None. Good comment. Oh, Marilyn, sorry, didn't see you there. So, I've been reading for years about wireless microwave radiation, smart meters, uh, um, bioinitiative.org is the good source, cell phone task force.org. Excuse me, Marilyn, there's a point where there's, um, you can talk about things not on the consent agenda. I are on, so, so you, you could, have smart meters. Right. It's not on the consent agenda. Oh, Later right. on, there'll be a, an opportunity to talk oh, about Oh, this about is about the consent agenda. Yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is, are there any, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. To approve. To approve, of course. The consent okay. agenda, yes. All right, except for item 3.8. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. 
I guess roll call. Director Balboni. Yes. Vice President Lather. Yes. Director LeHugh. Yes. Director Christensen is absent. President Jaffe. Yes. Okay, so now it's oral and written communications. And this is an opportunity for the public to speak on any items of interest that are not on the agenda. Sorry, Marilyn. So now. So the district has installed smart meters. Whenever I hear smart, I think of dangerous microwave radiation. So last time, I think I gave you this, uh, smart meters costing you money, risking your health, privacy, and safety. What are smart meters? Any electronic utility meter, usually wireless, allows utilities, third parties, and governments access to detailed information about your home life, emits radio frequency radiation, and dirty electricity linked to environmental and health problems can catch fire, explode, and damage appliances, increases utility bills, and uh, this is from stopsmartmeters.org. Now, in the last year, Cell Phone Task Force, which is another scientific source of information, uh, collected worldwide testimonies about smart meters. And one of these I'll just read and I'll leave you copies. This is a huge problem, see elephant in the room, to act like it's not there um, just puts it further in danger. This is Catherine Ralston, who lives in Taos. A smart meter was put in at my address, she writes. I started having trouble sleeping at night. I started having headaches. I stopped waking up happy. My emotions were flatlined. This happened quickly over a couple of weeks. Someone told me about symptoms showing up in people. Are, you, are there three minutes? Yeah, I think you get one more minute. We Thank you. made a mistake. So, I another guess minute. I'll forgive you. <laughs> um, this happened quickly after a couple of weeks. Someone told me about symptoms showing up in people after smart meters were installed where they live. I went looking for the smart meter. Then I moved my bed to a location in the building as far from the meter as I could put it and slept with my head at the end of the bed furthest from the meter location. I slept through the night and woke up with no headaches. I do not own the property and the owner won't work with the electric company to get back the old meter. I feel blessed someone told me about the horrible impact the smart meters have on human health. You know, it's like, why are corporations allowed to do this kind of harm? There's something very immoral about this. Okay, I will give you copies. Thank you. Thank you, Brown. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. Just to follow up a bit on what Ms. Garrett said, um, I still want to protest that uh, the district has made the determination that unless customers have a smart meter, they cannot get any uh, leak adjustment. I don't think that's fair. So um, I also, regarding leaks, I want to uh, inquire. There was a major leak in SoCal Creek Water District's line on Cathedral Drive over the weekend. It happened sometime Friday night and was reported early Saturday morning. Crews went there, I saw them, but they didn't fix it. And water was allowed to run all weekend. It was a lot of water running down the road all weekend. Crews showed up Monday and it was quickly fixed. <laughs> so my question is, how can customers uh, take seriously the need to conserve water and to 
promptly address their leaks when the district does not do it themselves. Um, I realize it could have taken overtime for weekend crews, but doing things like that shows the public that you are serious about water conservation. I also want to address some uh, correspondence that I saw in today's agenda packet, and that is, again, from the Santa Cruz group of the Sierra Club. I hope that you saw it, because, again, they are imploring that the district's uh, construction contractor, Garney Construction, stop work on Laurel Street Bridge. In the construction updates you, uh, the district put out last Friday, it said that the work is resuming on the Laurel Street Bridge, and it is for uh, the aesthetic coverings over the pipe. This is in the middle section of the bridge where the cliff swallows, a protected migratory bird, come and go for their mud nests. The Sierra Club provided you photos. These nests are active. It is against the law to disturb them. So the Sierra Club and I implore you to make Garney stop the work until September 1st, when the birds have completed their nesting and returned to South America. They are protected by the federal 1918 Migratory Bird Act. I wrote you, the Sierra Club wrote you, the crews were there yesterday. So um, I don't know if they were working, but they were definitely on the bridge. There was a Soquel Creek Water District staff member there with them. And I implore you, please stop the work until September 1st. I have uh, written you, and I have also asked others to write you, and I hope that you will listen. The Sierra Club never got a response from the district the first time, March 5th, that they wrote you about this, other than a letter saying, we care about the environment, and thank you for your letter. Well, here they are again, and I'll submit this to you. Ron, do you want to respond? Uh, I don't think there's any need to say anything at this time. Okay. Thank you. All right, any items that uh, the board members wanted to talk about? Oh, can I give a really quick brief, um, brief uh, report for the Aqua Conference? Please do. Okay, so I attended the Aqua Conference. It was my first one in Sacramento, May 7th through 9th. And um, it was really a good one. And uh, some of the highlights were that Governor Newsom came and talked to us about climate change and about his big, you know, overall um, picture for water in California. That was very exciting. And um, just in general, I noticed, you know, more and more districts are collaborating, not just with other water districts and other cities and entities, but also with state parks and environmental groups. There's just like more and more collaboration. So. Just, I think, a trend to note. Um, let's see. Um, another thing was um, there were quite a few talks on really following nature's design for um, water infrastructure. And in particular, a lot of focus on people and water districts in highly forested areas um, because of wildfires and um, also in flood zones. So, you know, flood zones, um, forestry. Oh, and also, you know, a lot of talk about all the new regulations as well on PFAS, uh, lead, chrome, chrome 6. So um, anyway, just some uh, brief highlights. Um, and just again, it was um, very, very exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Anyone else? Rochelle? Okay. <laughs> President Jaffe, I will add that we have responded to Sierra Club, their second letter. Okay, so there was a response. Yes, we sent the response, I think, yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And is that response available to the public or? Uh, it'll be published in our board packet, and it's uh, it's at, if the Sierra Club wants to, to share it, of course. Yes. Okay. I'll look right Thank you. Okay. So that brings us to reports. There are none. Uh, administrative business. There are no conditional or unconditional will serves. So that brings us to item 6.2. And I want to note that on the agenda, there were extra words at the end of the sentence. 
the uh, board packet actually has the correct title, Organize, organ, Organization Review and Staffing Consider Authorizing Water Resources Planner Position as part of District Regular Staffing Plan. And this looks like it's Tracy. Thank you, President Jaffe. Um, I presented a memo for the board to consider tonight. Um, it's uh, asking the board to consider um, making the current limited term um, water resources planner position as part of the district regular staffing plan. This is a position that we hired in 2019 as part of a three to five year limited term position to perform a number of duties um, around water resources planning as it related to our building and construction uh, project. Um, through the last number of years, we've recognized that <clears throat> the need for the district um, definitely uh, with a lot of regulatory changes um, and guidelines that we have to follow, um, we really think that this position as it stands makes much sense to add to the regular staffing plan and so we're asking the board to consider making that uh, change from limited term to a regular position that's part of the mid-management um, employee group and um, I'm the information that's proposed to you tonight is to uh, make that change. We've met with the mid-management group and everyone was favorable uh, for this change and so we're, we're happy to report that as well. Thank you. Public comment on this item. Thank you. Last meeting, the room here was filled with quite a number of SEIU people um, worried about uh, reorganization. Is this the same matter? It's unclear to the public uh, what exactly is uh, being planned here will how and how that will affect the SEIU workers. I would like to support the SEIU workers uh, They were very upset and um, I don't see them here tonight So I want to ensure that their interests that they express their concerns at the last board meeting have been addressed if this is the same issue I also um, am curious why the assistant manager Mr. Uh, Mumper has not ever been introduced publicly to the board, to the public, yet I met him. He's the one, the assistant manager that deals with, as Mr. Duncan has said, all things Pure Water SoCal. But I happened to see his name in, a, in some correspondence last time and kind of pieced it together and introduced myself. And yes, he was in the back of the room but he's never been introduced publicly, and I ask that you do so. Thank you. Thank you. Marilyn, on this item. This is about having a person, what's the title of the position? Um, uh, Water Resources Planner position. Uh, so on here, Pure Water SoCal Education Operations Center. You said that, uh, that it got changed. That's the next item. Oh, you're are you on six point one or six point two? Point two. Point two. What? Six point one. Am I looking wrong? Conditional point and two. unconditional will serve says no. Six point two. It, it's, go ahead, Ron. Okay, the confusion may be that, uh, as President Jaffe stated at the beginning of the meeting, that 6.2 has several words at the end of the sentence that should not be on there, and those words are Pure Water SoCal Educational Operations Center. Those um, are on item, should they are on 6.3 and should be on 6.3. They are on the by mistake, they're on the agenda. Confusing. For right, but not on it the is. memo. If you look at the memo itself, it does not have it. Okay. I it was, a, cu it was a cut in, I think it was a cut in paste. Easily there. understand that you would be confused because it wasn't written correctly. 
So if you want to speak on the Pure Water SoCal educational, uh, it's the next item. That's your intent. Okay. What's this one? This one is the staffing plan for mid-management position. The staffing. Water resources, Water resources planner. planner. Making a, a position that's been uh, a, a term into a permanent it position. It seems like there's so much finances on this pure water and convincing the public and doing educational outreach and uh, there's nothing that I've read that convinces me it's safe to inject treated sewage water in the aquifer. All right. Is this your hand? I don't know. So board members, any questions about this item? That's Skyler's position currently, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And this is a mid-management position, so it's not SEIU. That's correct. So, Becky, that's why this is just something different. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll move approval. I'll second. I'll second. I think Rochelle got in earlier. Don't Jennifer, worry. that's the problem with being remote. <laughs> One of the problems. One of the problems, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> moved by Tom, seconded by Rochelle. Roll call. Director Balboni? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director LeHue? Yes. Director Christensen is absent. President Jaffe? Yes. All right, so now that brings us to 6.33, which is approve pursuant to an exemption from the California, Eco Envi California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, the selection of Bogart Construction as the construction manager at risk for Pure Water SoCal operations and education center renovation and contract award. That's you, Tosh. It's me, but it's also uh, Adam Bayer, who's uh, in the audience okay. there, the second in from the end. <clears throat> He's been uh, the district's um, lead on this, and, and I'm really grateful for his effort on this. Uh, sitting next to him is a representative from Bogard Construction. Uh, Jared Bogard couldn't be here tonight due to other commitments, but he, he wanted to be here and he wanted representation. Um, Director LeHue and uh, Director Balboni were part of our uh, selection committee and uh, this started back in February when we released the RFP, RFQ for this uh, project. And I feel relatively grateful for Bogard submitting a proposal. I am grateful for it. They're a very qualified firm. Um, I think their proposal is attached with their experience and qualifications and past projects. Their, their uh, proposal is falls very short from their list of Past projects. If you go to their website, you can see the numerous uh, local projects that they have done uh, for the community, for the library system, um, for the, the medical facilities, um, family resource centers. It's just, it's a long list of uh, successful projects. So um, I believe that the selection committee and staff um, make this recommendation to award um, the first phase of the construction management manager at risk contract uh, to Bogard. Um, that first phase is a pre-construction design phase where they would assist and review um, the design work, give feedback, value engineering, um, and also prepare a schedule and budget uh, numbers for us to use and review and then there is also a second phase which would be like an early procurement for long lead time items that are identified during the, the first phase and that is not being considered tonight it's just the first phase um, and there is no guarantee for a contract uh, of construction which is the third phase and through this uh, design phase, they would prepare us a guaranteed maximum price where we would review it and then bring it back to the board <clears throat> for, for uh, approval and amendment to the, the CMAR contract. 
uh, the, the contract is, is included in the packet, very lengthy contract. BBK was um, the author of it. And uh, so it, it has been reviewed and uh, we're making this recommendation for the first phase. It's $100,000 $100, to, to participate and, and, and move to the next step. Thank you, Taj. Um, public comment? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I do not, I disagree that this is CEQA exempt. And here's why. The Education Center will bring in many, many people, many busloads of tours that were never um, analyzed in the project's EIR or in any of the addendums. So I have written your board about the problematic intersection that the entrance to the education center and the treatment facility pose and gotten a response. But this is a big issue at that intersection, especially now that the um, Chanticleer pedestrian bicycle overcrossing is coming in, being built there. And this is going to be a very busy intersection with pedestrians, bicyclists, and traffic. That this project, the Education Center, will be contributing to. It must be analyzed. This is not CEQA exempt. It should be analyzed and safety mitigations must be put in place. I have discussed this with some of the law enforcement who are right next door, and they agree that um, it may merit a light, it may merit some sort of mitigation, and that is part of your project, and you must analyze it. So this is not CEQA exempt. And so I ask that um, you please uh, require a traffic analysis of the proposed visitation, in addition to the many large trucks of supplies that will be coming and going from the treatment facility itself. Thank you. Not CEQA exempt at all. You just heard a long list of reasons of problems, environmental and health-wise. And the chemicals that are used in this, there are often spills or mishaps. And if I were a business personally, I'm always looking at what's not toxic. I don't want to be involved in what's toxic. And our environment is loaded with toxic chemicals. This is not CEQA exempt. I'm been to many Board of Supervisors meeting and seen this listed as negative declaration, exempt from CEQA, and there are huge environmental problems like with cell towers, et cetera. Um, this is very, very problematic, the whole it's like going down a rabbit hole. It just gets more and more deep and convoluted and toxic. And this is just one part of it. Um, not not CEQA exam. It's a problem. And since you've heard tonight of what is likely to happen with the juxtaposition of this education center with the toxic treatment facility, you have been put on notice that this is a problem. I met someone once who told uh, when they were logging a hillside near this residential area that later when rain and floods come, there would Thank be- you, a problem. This is the same kind of thing. Take heed. Thank you. Okay. Ron, it looks like you. Yeah, President Jaffe, I think uh, uh, our council would like to say a few words and then maybe uh, Melanie will follow up with that. Okay. 
Josh? Uh, yeah, thanks, Ron, and thanks, President Jeffy. I just wanted to briefly respond to the CEQA issue that was raised during public comment. Um, we did have uh, the CEQA team review this contract before it went to the board to ensure we provided the appropriate level of CEQA review. Um, and as set forth in the staff report, this contract does not authorize award of, the constr of any construction. Rather, it simply moves forward with design and information gathering. Um, so for those reasons, and as outlined in the staff report, um, staff reiterates its belief that this is exempt from CEQA. Thank you. Okay. And Melanie? I can, thank you. I concur with what Josh said. In addition, um, tours and education of the facility was included in our environmental review. Okay. Any directors have any questions? Tom? Yeah, this is uh, maybe one for Taj or Adam. Um, I noticed there was like a cost proposal for the overall cost estimate on page 163. It's like two point something million, two point four million. And how does is that just kind of a ballpark and then before you get to your GMP at some point in this process? Yeah, that was uh, an estimate that we provided okay. the, the proposal proposers. Okay. And they, they gave us their, their markups and fees on using that basis. Okay. But, I mean, it'll all going to get be, revised. It'll be revised as we go along and then we'll have a uh, GMP, right? Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Rochelle? Anything? Jennifer? No, thanks. I'm good with it. Since you're up there, Taj, I was curious. You gave a, a savings of approximately $12,000 for each week that the project is accelerated. Is that a savings in terms of the costs of the of uh, loans, or, or is, is that based on increased projected prices for materials or what that's the um that's the overhead that the bogard is is using for their staff to man the project during phase two i see so if during phase two or during the, the preparation of the gmp if there's a way to to bring that schedule in then we can work with them to to cut those costs by that amount per week. Okay. That's their weekly burn rate. Thank you. Yeah. And then thank you, Josh and Melanie, for for weighing in on, on the public comment. Um, Tom, you were on the selection committee? Yeah, I mean, and we were both very satisfied with Bogart as being a good, solid company and we felt comfortable with that we always like to get you know three bids but in light of the quality of the one bid we were, we were okay with going with it okay and then who, who else was on that Jennifer Jennifer did you want to weigh in um no I mean I think they did an excellent job um we had some questions and um explanations and I I felt very comfortable with with the process. Adam did an excellent job. All right. Thank you both for being on that committee. Uh, I don't have any more questions. And I'll move approval of authorization for the president to sign the contract. I accept, we'll second. <laughs> Rochelle was going slowly to allow you to second. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Thank you. So moved and seconded. So roll call. Director Balboni? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Christensen is absent. President Jaffe? In light of what we've heard from our legal counsel and from our assistant general manager, yes. And from Tom and, and Jennifer and Tosh as well. All right, so passes. That brings us to 6.4. Good evening again. This is this is Tracy, Human Resources Manager, and I get the honor to present this item tonight. Um, item 6.4 is informational to the board, and we really just wanted to take an opportunity to showcase the partnerships that the SoCal Creek Water District and uh, local nonprofit, Your Future is Our Business, 
have. Um, and uh, as you read in your packet, um, <clears throat> we shared some of the recent um, collaborations that we've had uh, through mentorship and through internship. And so um, we really want to highlight that we support um, youth-centered opportunities and really trying to bring in a lot of youth into understanding public service and the water industry. We, we value it so much that it really, um, it really warms our heart to be able to contribute back to the community. Um, one of the items we really want to share tonight is a quick presentation by our recent intern. Um, she worked through Your Future is Our Business uh, over the last few months. Um, she is a fantastic student um, and her name is Namali. And I'd like to just have Namali say a few words about her experience. This is a recorded presentation. She couldn't be here tonight, but um, would love Namali to say a few words about her experience in working with Soquel Creek Water District. All right, thank you. Hi everyone. First of all, I thank Your Futures Our Business for providing me with this opportunity. Secondly, I want to say thank you to everyone at the district for being incredibly welcoming and giving me an invaluable experience. After working with Yvette at Your Futures Our Business, I was given the chance to intern with Soquel Creek Water District and assist with the lead service line inventory. While most of my time was spent on the inventory, I also had opportunities to go out into the field and see several different water treatment plants and learn how they operate. Learning the nuances of how a water district runs opened my eyes to their complexities and importance. While working on the lead service line inventory, I became quite skilled at using Excel. I learned to identify a lead service line, although I never actually saw one, and I got to learn from a variety of different staff members. After thoroughly reviewing the EPAs and the state guidelines for the lead service line inventory, I spent time categorizing and, and identifying parcels that could potentially have lead service lines. Additionally, I worked in Excel to randomize unknown service lines and select a portion to be visually inspected. The final stages of my work consisted of creating a standard operating procedure to identify service line material. Lastly, I assisted Alyssa Abbey in writing an inspection plan that was submitted to the state. Going into my internship, I didn't know exactly what to expect, but I was excited to see what I was going to learn. I gained a lot of workplace experience that I didn't expect to. I thoroughly enjoyed getting to know everyone and learning about their career paths. This was incredibly valuable to me as I head into college this fall. Learning how people progress through their life to get where they are today has given me guidance on how to navigate my career. More than any hard skills and knowledge I gained, I left knowing that being a kind person who is willing to help others and takes great care in their work will lead me to where I want to go. I know that the skills I gained during this time will continue to benefit me as I move through my college career and beyond. Having this internship experience at a young age will prepare me for what I will encounter in my future endeavors. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity with Soquel Creek Water District. So I really want to uh, give a shout out to Alyssa Abbey and to Greg Wilson. Um, it was a collaborative partnership between the Water Resources Department and Operations and Maintenance Department. And as you could hear, Namali really had a fantastic experience. So thanks to all, and obviously thanks to your futures, our business for working with us. And thanks to Taj for being a great mentor. Fantastic. And more, hopefully more of these in the future. It, it worked for both. Yeah. I had a question. You know, before um, we were talking about somehow having students involved in the public outreach or committee and is her and it seemed like with this year your future is our business seems like it might be a a good avenue to be able to do that but i don't know what you all think about that i think when this was brought up in the past i think emma um emma had we had kind of talked about it with emma and i think she was maybe going to be looking into the possibility of doing something but i'm okay. not quite sure yeah emma? Emma provided some options, and and it also included waiting until she got back from yeah. maternity. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Check that box. Okay. All right. I just wanted to bring it up again, and, and, and I wanted to also thank you, Taj, too, because I know from just being a high school teacher how much those kind of extra efforts that people make to connect uh, it can really make a huge difference. So thank you. All right. And I 
We did not. Can I take just say I'm also very proud of the district, and I wanted to thank also Alyssa, Greg, Taj. Um, and mentoring young people is like one of the best things that we can do in our lives. So thank you. Awesome. All right. And we did not take public comment. So any public comment on this? Doesn't seem like there is any. All right. So we have an item from the um, consent agenda that was pulled, and we have closed session. What's the normal way this is done? Uh, we'll we'll tackle the uh, what's on tap, the item that was pulled, and then and then do the closed session. Closed session, yes. Okay. Tom, it's very short. Like I, I, overall, I thought it was great. Um, I really like starting out with the helpful videos and that picture of Chris. Is it? That's that's awesome. Um, and. And overall, I really, and then your future is our business. I thought it was a great thing. I just, you know how I am about undefined acronyms. Um, so on page 29, under ongoing emergency repair and maintenance, I'm just not sure if everybody knows what USA locate response is. Okay. I know it's underground service something, but. Misleading. For sure. uh, okay. But I just, I you know. Up. I picked up on that too. It just, I just want to, you know, people would go, yeah, you knew USA, what the heck? Yeah. And then under water smart, I just didn't know if we should put a plug in that it not only saves water, but can save the customer money to catch a leak early. You know, I just keep wanting to really encourage people to go for that water smart. That's, that's it. Yeah. Thanks. And then there were, there were a couple of typos as well, especially under the hydrology 101 portion. I wasn't going to say anything. They're small, but there's a couple of missing periods. Okay. We, we will look for those. And if you see any other typographical um, edits, just email it to myself or Rebecca. Yeah. Yeah. We want it to okay. be perfect going out. Thank you. Yeah. And mine is even more nitpicky. Perhaps on page 29, um, 224, under treatment, it says electrical and mechanical work continues at both sites. I think that should be spelled out what those both sites are. Okay. Thank you. Nothing else? Do you want to move approval? Do you want to take any public comment? Oh, the, oh public comment, yeah. I think it's also... It, we just give direction. I don't think it's a motion then. Okay. Thank you. Any comment Thank on you. what's on tap? Yes. Thank you. Um, I wonder why there is no mention in the what's on tap of the update of your leak adjustment policy. I didn't see that in there. And also, I didn't see any mention of the board voting to remove a number of the conservation incentives that have been offered in the past to update the public about that. Um, I'm glad to see some mention of the water optimization report analysis coming along and um, hope that you will um, explain a little more about what that involves and a link to any um, drafts of that report. Thank you. Thank you. Perhaps uh, subsequent what's on tap could tackle the water leak adjustment. Um, and just for clarification, there was a proposal to remove rebates, and that did not occur. The rebates still stay as they are, if that's what you're referring to. All right, so that ends this meeting. Before we get the open session, we're going to go into closed session and then come back and report out from closed session. Is there, are there any um, comments? What, excuse me. Um, no, it was informational. Tom informational. told me that there wasn't a necessary for it to have a, a motion. Um, so public comment on the closed session. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, I want to I want to express how disappointed I was with what happened at last board meeting. It was 
completely unnecessary regarding the resolution. And this applies to case uh, 24CV00907, which is related to the uh, action that your board took last time. Um, the resolution 202404 that your board approved that caused me to um, file case 24CV00907 was because uh, there was no complete contract agreement provided to you or to the public at that time on March 5th that you approved that action. None of you asked questions, very few questions. And it bothered me a lot. Hold, hold on one second, I wanna clarify. Can you stop the clock, please? Thank you. Yeah, so this is about the closed session last time. Is this, is this on this closed session? It, it should be. It's litigation, correct? There's specific litigation that's, that's listed here. Now let me take a look. I don't see it. Josh, do you want to respond to that? Um, I, yeah, so I, I, I do think this is, yes, um, it is relevant to the sixth case that Ms. Steinbrenner has filed, which is on the agenda. Okay, I apologize, Becky. That's all right. Thank all right, you. Start the clock and continue on. Thank you. Now, this relates to um, the case that actually the district initiated, 24CV00566, um, wherein you're asking anybody that doesn't think the rate increases were legal to step up. Well, people have stepped up. And the case that I filed had to do with the, in, uh, the, the poor information that was given to the board and to the public. And I filed Public Records Act requests, and I got a reply today from Ms. Hart, and it states right here, and I will submit this to the board, the district does not have this document. What I was asking for was the complete agreement. The district does not have this document in its files as of March 23rd, 2024. So how could you have approved an agreement that did not exist? You want to take an extra 30 seconds, go ahead, because I interrupted you. Thank you. We stopped the clock, though, to be clear. So she had full two minutes. Okay, just want to know. Go ahead. I just want to say um, this, this letter that I received today compels me to continue that lawsuit and possibly file another based on what happened last week. Thank you. All right, Great. thank you. All right, so we'll now adjourn to closed session. One more speaker. Oh, wait, sorry, Marilyn. Uh, having been here last week as well, that you approved a document you didn't have is appalling. And if, when, when questions are asked that are legitimate and important, a, a governing and elected board needs to respond to that for the public to have confidence in you. And that shows you know what you're doing. Um, I was also shocked at, at the behavior. It was a simple question about where, where is the documents? Should be able to say here or wait a minute, we better look into this question. I want to investigate, you know, you as elected people. I remember at Board of Supervisors meeting when Marty Warmhound years ago was chair, she would ask questions, she would investigate. And that's what I would ask you to do. I very much admire Becky. She's like a paralegal. She speaks for the interests I share on the public well-being, the health of the environment, our water system, and spends countless hours volunteer for the public good. Uh, and, and people, I, I mean, to me, it's like, thank you. We need to 
look into this. I, I very much agree with the research Becky has done that shows problems here. Thank, Thank you, Marilyn. So we're going to adjourn into closed session. That's correct.